Brothers and sisters, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, reminding you that his grace and peace are yours this day and forevermore. As we come into this time of holy worship, may God's presence be with you, knowing that maybe it's fairly soon we'll be back together again. At least uh, the numbers are headed in the right direction. As I mentioned, our images today um, will focus on being children of God. We know that um, we all start that way. <laughs> and in fact, oftentimes, uh, you know, what is it we do when a child is born? We make funny noises, we coo, we say how cute, we pinch cheeks, and we talk about the innocence of children. And yet, I, I think probably um, this romantic notion usually doesn't last long, especially for, for parents who soon after a little while, are woken in the night, get grumpy because they're not getting enough sleep, uh, the timing of the cries doesn't meet their timing, I mean, all these things, uh, right from the get-go. And it's not long before we find ourselves in the throes of, what do we call it? Terrible what? <laughs> Twos? <laughs> Terrifying threes? <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, think of this. Um, there's once a, a story told about a little boy who who ran up to his mother, who was in, um, himself near hysteria. And, and, and he announces to her that, that his pet turtle has, has um, uh, rolled over and seems to have died. Uh, he was just absolutely inconsolable. No matter what she said, uh, nothing soothed him. He, he, just, he just kept crying. And so desperate, she, she called, uh, uh, called her husband at work and, and, and assured, assured the little boy that daddy would take care of things when he got home. Well, sure enough, uh, Daddy comes home and gathers up his, his, his boy in his arms, still tearful, still crying, and, and Daddy begins to offer some, some comforting words, saying, well, you know, maybe that they would have a, a funeral for, for the little turtle. And, and, and yes, and, and not only that, but then Daddy began to, 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 to say, well, we would, we would empty the, the tin box, the one that we normally keep the candy in, and, and that could serve as the coffin. And, well, we could even, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, have our little procession to a burial place in the backyard. And, and of course, about this time, the, the little boy has stopped his crying, and he's, he's listening intently um, and, and, and seems to be uh, imagining the plans in his mind. Um, and, of course, then about that time, you know, Mother chimes in. Well, well yes, uh, we could even have a, a party afterwards. You know, every, every funeral has, has uh, something for their guests to eat. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, about this point, a smile begins to grow on the face of the little boy. And as, um, as he's encouraged, uh, the father went on to suggest, well, yeah, uh, we, could, we could do that. And, and we could have balloons and we could have some of your friends over and, and everything. Well, now the little boy is just absolutely grinning from ear to ear. But, but, but suddenly, uh, the, the turtle flops over onto its legs again and slow 
slowly starts moving across the, 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 the bedside table where it had been laying upside down this whole time. Oh, the little boy, of course, looked startled, as did Daddy and, and Mommy. And then the little boy turns to his daddy and says, wait a minute, can we kill it? Well, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe not so innocent, <laughs> at least not for long. Uh, because as we, as we grow from being these sweet little children, uh, not knowing a, a, a trauma, not knowing a, uh, what it means to be rejected, not knowing what it, what it means to kick ourselves for not doing well enough to, to meet somebody else's satisfaction. Yet all these things we learn as we grow. And so it's not long before the innocence of children is not innocence at all. But we hear about the image of children in the scriptures in several places. It's no surprise, I suppose, um, that in the prophecies uh, of the Messiah, uh, among the voices we hear is, is Isaiah. And as Isaiah begins to imagine uh, through, through this inspiration of God put in his heart uh, about a coming Messiah, he again uh, imagines a Messiah coming, first of all, as a child. Most of us think of the adult version first, <laughs> you know, the one who, who's already the soldier, the one who's already powerful and mighty to come fix things, but not Isaiah. He begins with the image of, of a Savior coming as a child and then continues to use the, the image of, of how things would change and become God's kingdom in its fullness, but also using children to describe that kingdom when it comes. Listen to these verses. A shoot, a shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A, a branch will sprout from his roots. You see, the Lord's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and, and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in the land. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth, and by the breath of his lips he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips, and faithfulness the belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together. A lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play over the snake's hole. Toddlers will reach right over the serpent's den. They won't harm or destroy anywhere on my holy mountain, for the earth will surely be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, just as the water crosses the seas. Ah, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children, in this image coming from Isaiah, I suppose it's much like the image of other scriptures that use uh, uh, children as a metaphor to describe not only God's kingdom, but this Messiah. Children aren't necessarily innocent any more than the rest of us, but somehow as God's kingdom unfolds, as we, as we learn more about who God is in our lives, as we, as we strive to know Jesus, what we learn is not so much that it's a process of a return to innocence as it is just um, a realization that when God created all things, everything was, uh, well, everything was well together. Everything was good together. In fact, it was very good together. And yet somehow we know through, well, sin coming into the world, now it seems as if the very fabric of nature itself fights one against another and human beings being right smack in the middle of it. So a return to being a child somehow as becoming part of God's, uh, becoming part of God's uh, kingdom is not so much a return to innocence as it is just for us to be listening for how God valued equally and utmost all of creation. Human beings being set apart uh, to care for creation, yes, as co-creators with God, but human beings being mo no more or no less important uh, than, than any other aspect of creation. In the same way, with, even within humanity, within, uh, within this human order, 
never was there an expectation that, that one would be more important than another. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know in the Old Testament we have that language about, about a chosen people. But you have to understand, we, we all must understand, that to be chosen is not to be more important. To be chosen is not to be better than, but to be chosen is to carry the responsibility of living into the kingdom, of choosing kingdom life is to bear the responsibility of letting go the traumas, letting go the fear, letting go all of the things that have misdirected us and caused us to fight against even all of the creation that God has made, fighting against one another. So here we are, looking to become part of God's kingdom under the fullness of God's design, the fullness in which, um, again, Scripture uses as um, the image of children. When you stop and think about how children were were you know, uh, valued in society at the time of Jesus, we actually learned that, that children are just little tools. They're just little instruments. They're, they're pieces of property. Uh, we know, <laughs> we know that, um, that, a, that a woman, for example, uh, might in her, the course of a lifetime, uh, she might give birth uh, maybe a dozen times, maybe 15 times or more. Um, and we know that in, in the act of giving birth, there was a, an extreme danger that might even take her life, but more often than not, would take as much as maybe a, a quarter to a third of the children uh, in infancy. Some of those children would live on, but never make it to adulthood. And then, and then a few would make it to adulthood. Uh, so children were a common commodity. I, I'm afraid to describe it that way, but that's kind of how society was. There wasn't much value put in children, though that's not to say parents didn't love their children. Um, but yet at the same time, uh, when it came down to it, children oftentimes uh, were treated like uh, just property. Uh, one remained uh, under, the, uh, under the direction of one's father, um, doing exactly as you were told, honoring father and mother. And, and again, that honoring was maybe more than what we think of it today as just simply respect but an honoring in which we wouldn't dare not do uh, what parents would ask us to do, uh, even if we had an inclination that there was a better way. Um, but being children in Jesus' day was, well, was not a good thing. <laughs> Um, you weren't allowed to play necessarily so much, although I suppose there was always some playtime, uh, because again, children were very much a part of the household. Uh, were required to, uh, as soon as they could carry something, be immediately at work. As soon as they were able to intellectually get something figured out to solve problems or, or to contribute to a little bit more of a, a, a demanding task around the household, that's exactly what they would do. Or, or to begin to uh, till the soils and, and to prepare them and to even be a part of the harvest, uh, that they would be exactly put to work with these things. Uh, and, and each step along the way, as they would do more and more, the risk <laughs> to their injury, the, the risk uh, to their very lives, kept going up and up and up. Children, we have a hunger. We have a hunger to see children protected, and so does God. But guess what? Even in whatever age we are, we are God's children. This is really the will of God. We begin to understand how Jesus teaches, how Jesus teaches about the place of children uh, in the image of who, the kingdom of God. Consider what it means to be a child and how it is that we go from, um, uh, especially in our modern times, um, from, um, from an innocence to, to learning about life, from an innocence to, to becoming traumatized. Um, theologian uh, Frederick uh, Buchner, uh, in his autobiography, um, talks about a, a moment in which he, he awaits his grandmother's arrival eagerly. And he has a gift for her. Um, as a child, you know, you know how what children gifts are. They're, they're odd things. But he has a gift for her. And his gift on this one occasion that he remembers as an adult now uh, is cold green beans, <laughs> knowing that evidently he's experienced her coming and, and being at mealtime uh, with his household before and how maybe she enjoyed them. And, and so when she arrives, he has something to present to her. Uh, but then recounting the experience, he he remembers overhearing a conversation about his special gift to her when she doesn't think that he's listening. He tells about it this way. 
I don't remember then what she said exactly, but it was an aside to my parents or whatever grown-ups happened to be around to the effect that she did not usually eat after 3 o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it was, let alone eat cold string beans of another age, but that she would see what she could do for propriety's sake. Whatever it was, she said it dryly, wittily, the way she had said everything, never dreaming for a moment that I would hear or understand, but I did hear. And what I came to understand for the first time in my life, I suspect, why else would I remember it, was that the people you love had two sides to them. One side is the side they love you back with, and the other side is the side that, well, even when they do not mean to, they can sting you like a wasp the first telltale crack in the foundation of the one home which perhaps any child has when you come right down to it, and that is the home that he loves and the people that he loves. When the Messiah comes, we are invited to hear how God's kingdom will be restored. It'll be all of us as children of God having been traumatized one way or another, having lost innocence fairly quickly, actually, and having become internalized, if nothing else, having become ourselves pawns or, or feeling as if somehow we're commodities, only good as long as we're able to accomplish something or be someone that maybe we're not. The kingdom of God is restored when all of this stuff can be surrendered. Yeah, I say surrendered because too often we hold on to the trauma. We hold on to the fear of not living up to someone else's expectations or to becoming something we're not just because people say we ought to be. Jesus' message to the world is absolutely not complicated. Repent and believe, he says. But the repenting part sometimes is difficult. We so form our own ideas of who we are based upon things like, like Frederick Buchner describes, based upon traumas of, of having you know, eagerly waited for someone you love and, and then presenting them with the best gift you could possibly to present only to overhear a conversation where they didn't value your gift at all. And somehow that stings because it feels like not only did the gift not get valued, but the heart with which we presented it to was not valued. And when we hold on to these wounded states, when we hold on to these uh, fears that they create that live up to, to anything uh, that, is, that is asked of us by those who love us, when we, when we begin to feel that way, how then do we, well, begin to think about God? That somehow we can never measure up? That somehow we're not worthy of this forgiveness that comes? No, to receive the message of Jesus Christ, it is not complicated, but that's not to say that it's easy. The very people who love us teach us not to trust, and we have so fallen away from trust in these days that because we don't trust anything, uh, even the very institutions that have upheld us uh, for generations are beginning to crumble, not because the institutions have changed, but because we have refused to trust them anymore. But who is them? <laughs> it's us. We don't trust ourselves. In Mark chapter 10 of the Gospel of Mark, uh, beginning in verse 13, um, this incident takes place, again, involving children. People were bringing children to Jesus so that he would bless them. But the disciples scolded them. And when Jesus saw this, he grew angry and, and said to them, Allow the children to come to me. Don't forbid them, because God's kingdom belongs to people like these children. I assure you that whoever doesn't welcome God's kingdom like a child will never enter it. Then he hugged the children and blessed them. What we know about children is that in spite of the fact that they, all of us, <laughs> are 
probably traumatized over something as simple as a handful of string beans, <laughs> cold string beans at that, being rejected by someone that we love. Though we are traumatized fairly early in our lives, which wounds us, that we then carry that with us, the truth is we, we still trust those very people. Our woundedness is there, and, and we begin to build shields around ourselves, perhaps like a snail, <laughs> inserting ourselves into a shell and making sure that we keep growing that shell as we grow so that some part of us can never be hurt. But then we're never fully loved, are we? Because when we protect ourselves from the vulnerability, from the risk of, of, of trusting someone to love us, we begin to now not trust many things. And when we trust nothing, then what is left to take the place of faith, of love, of peace, of joy? All these things that take vulnerability, all these things that take a level of trust to let go of what has defined us in the form of trauma, in the form of woundedness, in the form of pain or fear. We are invited to be like children, not innocent, for that is never restored. But to be like children who, even though they've been wounded, still find a way to trust. And the trust that we're asked to give ourselves to is the very grace of God. The grace of God that does restore us. And as we begin to trust that grace, we begin to feel ourselves believing that it is true. That we are worthy of the forgiveness of what is offered to us for the sins we've created. And oftentimes the sins out of the woundedness. For when we're hurt time and time and time again, we begin to lash out against one another. We begin to lash out against the very world. We begin to turn our backs on caring and instead uh, let greed run, rule the day. But as God invites us to trust, may we turn our hearts over to God again and again and again so that, so that <laughs> it is a soft heart that eventually receives the fullness of the kingdom of God. For being hard-hearted is the very thing that caused these people in Jesus' day to turn the children away from Jesus. For they were just unlovables, commodities. They didn't deserve to go before the teacher. And yet the teacher <laughs> said, no, don't prevent this. For no one, no one who has even an ounce of trust left in them to trust in the grace of God shall be turned away from the kingdom. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for the holy word today. As we receive it, we receive it, Lord, as adults. <laughs> Maybe a few children are listening in, and we hope this is the case. But as most of us as adults receive this good news, can we become like children again? Perhaps not with innocence. But God, you can grow trust within us if only it is something we choose to focus on, if only it is something we choose to have grown within our lives. For we can't do everything. <laughs> Even as I drive, drive home today, um, I can't, I can't uh, be assured that that little yellow line will keep somebody on their side. I, I have to trust that, that other drivers on the road will respect that boundary, and so that we can protect one another. We have to trust in something. So Lord, as we once again learn to put our trust in you, help us to understand and see and know that trust in you is nothing without trust in one another, without trust in the very creation that groans to care for us and to have us care for it. Lord God, enable us to so grow that trust that we begin to focus on the very grace itself that comes into our lives, that enables us to more fully each day to enter into your kingdom, even here and now. And as we receive the fullness of the forgiveness of our sins, Lord, that have held us back, and as we open our hearts to a fuller and greater trust, Lord, it is a strength that will replace what once we thought was weakness. There is a strength that will come and it will bring with it 
great joy. For the one who was born to us, joy to the world, is here and now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. So we continue singing uh, as children of God. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know, as he loved so long ago, taking children on his knee, saying, let them come to me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Brothers and sisters, I, in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, uh, pray God's grace upon you this day and always. Be children once again of the holy presence of God in Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of God has come. Amen.